Wilbur here. What would you think about a $100 Rolex? Listen to this. I bought this on an impulse after watching Jody from Just One More Watch Channel, and I've been seriously jonesing for an Explorer 1 for quite a while now. Not the little guy, but the big 40 millimeter dude. So I thought this would be kind of an interesting dry run for uh, getting a real Rolex. Buying and wearing this watch kind of sent me down a philosophical rabbit hole. This is a decent watch, and I'll explain more about that later, but it's not satisfying my need to wear an Explorer and get a real Rolex. And that made me think, what is it that's really truly satisfying about wearing certain watches and certain brands? And why am I going to spend a ridiculous amount of money sooner or later to buy a watch when I could buy any one of a hundred different watches that will work just as well in reality. But I bought this from AliExpress for less just under a hundred dollars. Uh, if this thing crapped out every year for the next 60 years I could buy a brand new watch and I'd still probably be money ahead over the Rolex. So even though the Rolex, of course, is, is better quality, uh, in reality, a lot of the things about quality are actually very subtle, and um, you might not even really, truly n notice. See, the case on the Parnas is very, very similar, and it feels good, um, although a little sharp on the corners. To my everlasting astoundment, uh, the movement on this thing actually performs within cosc. Uh, totally did not expect that. I don't imagine it would last anywhere near as long as a Rolex is going to last, and it has the noisiest possible movement. The auto winder on this thing is... You hear that? That's incredible. If I'm honest, Looks and performance alone are not enough to make me satisfied with a watch. Now, the reason I feel I need a Rolex has nothing to do with money, or at least not getting a good deal. And it's not just about quality. I think it boils down to two different things. So, first, um, the marketing has worked on me. I want to feel like the kind of interesting and discerning guy who demands Rolex quality. Second, the marketing has worked on me. I think of a Rolex in my mind and probably other people's also as a trophy. It's proof that I have the best, that I can afford the best, and that I've made it. There are other watches, of course, obviously, that are probably better quality, but most folks have never heard of AP, VC, uh, Piaget, JLC. They have no idea what that is, but everybody knows what a Rolex is. And it means something to people. It means success. And it means affluence. It means you can afford stuff. It means you're not just a duffer. It means... It probably means other things also. Some people will look at you as a frivolous, you know, first world problems kind of, uh, you know, conspicuous consumption kind of person. Uh, I'm okay with that. The watch itself is fine. It does look quite a bit like an Explorer, uh, especially the case. The crystal is supposed to be sapphire, but I don't think there's any way it could be. It has that kind of cloudiness to it that regular glass has. The bracelet is so janky and sad I couldn't use it. Actually, I couldn't even get the links apart to resize it. Yeah, absolutely a, a waste. The corners on the lugs are dead sharp. 
but they don't really bother you when you're wearing it on your wrist. Um, the loom is sad, as you would expect, but the most entertaining thing about this watch is the way the rotor sounds like it's whizzing around. My wife could actually hear it in the car with me sitting next to her driving 70 miles an hour down the highway. Um, it, it just makes me laugh when I hear it. As for dimensions and stuff, the watch is 40 millimeters by 13.2 uh, millimeters tall and 48.7, call that 50 millimeters lug to lug. And it weighs a nice, comfortable 79 grams, at least on this leather bracelet that I put it on. And it has, uh, well, it doesn't hack, but it does hand wine, and it says it has the Parnas Automatic 21 Joules. So here's the time grapher results, and as you can see, it's actually pretty freaking amazing uh, just how well this thing performs. That it's better than most of my watches. Now, would it stay that way? Is it? Can it take much banging around and all of that? Probably not. But for now, as things go, as it come out of the box, this thing performs stellar. So what did you think of this watch? The points as I see them are, one, it's a crap bracelet, but it's actually not that, it's, it's kind of pleasant to look at. Two, um, not a good sapphire crystal, not probably not sapphire at all. Three, the top of the case actually looks pretty darn good. The bottom of the case is very industrial in non-finished finish. Um, four, the Miyota movement is, uh, it hand winds, but it's not hacking. It performs incredibly well. It has the noisiest rotor in all creation, and it sounds like you're being chased by a flying saucer. Um, the loom, so sad that I didn't even bother to show you what the loom looked like. But then again, it's only $100. This is, I don't know. What do you think about this? Is this a decent deal for a hundred bucks? This isn't really going to work for me. It's been a fun experiment, but I'm ready to let this pass on and live uh, with somebody who would really enjoy it. So if you are interested in this watch, leave a comment below and uh, saying that you want the watch, and I will make a random selection of people who comment and if uh, if you win then I'll just ship this thing off to you with the janky bracelet you don't get to have my nice leather one anyway um, thanks for stopping by and uh, Wilbur out there's a, a wrist shot I think that looks that looks pretty good